Welcome back to Sailing with Lucy. In this episode, I show you how well I've recovered. Just wanted to give you an update on me. And we've finally set off. Well, it's been a really rock and rolly night and it's now 3.30 in the morning and we're heading out for Stevens once and for all. Sea state's been really unpleasant. Hi everyone, just wanted to give you an update on me and uh, my progress since my op uh, to remove that suspicious mole from my nose. Everything's gone according to plan as you can see, healing really well, very happy. It's been about a month now so it's probably going to take about a year for the swelling to go down but I'm so happy with the uh, result. Anyway, today we are about to set off for Port Stephens to go and pick up Kikamalu and bring it to Sydney. In the last couple of weeks there's been some devastating flooding up north due to some low pressure systems that have been coming through and we've been waiting for the right weather window. We're not going to have a lot of wind but it's a beautiful day, it's not raining and we thought we'd just get the boat ready, bring it to Sydney to put her up for sale and then we can start the search for the perfect Sailing with Lucy vessel. So about two weeks ago we actually chose a berth at Prince Alfred Yacht Club. Hey everyone, we're in Sydney looking at uh, berths for Kikamalu. She's about to be reborn. So which one is it Jimmy? The one here. Number 46. While at the Yacht Club we saw our old boat Nepenthe. She was our first boat as a family and I still recall how sad I was when we sold her. But I also recall how excited I was for a fresh start with Kikamalu. And now we're going to go and drop the car off and then off we go to Port Stephens. So let's go. The weather prediction was for a couple of fine days. So tomorrow we will get the boat ready and make our way to Nelson Bay to pick up a mooring before heading out early the next day. We're expecting fine weather tomorrow and not too much spray. So to prepare Kikamalu for the ocean we're removing some of the clears. The ability to set up a cockpit to provide protection from the sun, wind-driven spray or rain is a great feature in our opinion. Not just for comfort, but also for safety. We all get enough sun exposure just from the reflection off the water, so shades in our opinion are essential. How long has it been since we took that off? Oh, a few months, three or four months. Yeah. <laughs> We're heading out. I can't believe it. After over two years, this is the day. We were going to go to Nelson Bay for the night because it's protected from the swells but as all the moorings are taken our next choice is Shoal Bay close to the heads. Kamalu's going to rock and roll all night. Oh well, 
That's showbiz. Over the last couple of years, with lockdowns and border closures on and off, every time we sailed to this point I'd get this irresistible urge to just keep on sailing through those heads. I'd imagine the feeling of freedom, of seeing just open ocean, and be frustrated when we had to turn back every time. Tomorrow we're going through those heads, and it is blowing my mind. Told you'd be rocky and rolly. It's been a really rock and rolly night and it's now 3.30 in the morning and we're heading out of Shoal Bay and out of Port Stephens once and for all. It's been wonderful being here but it's going to be great to go to. So, yeah. Going out of the heads was a messy business. The forecast was for two to three metre swells from the southeast and northeast. There's also the East Australia Current, which runs southwards generally along the coast, but it does some funny things once it reaches south as far as Port Stephens. Not to mention that the tide is going out. This means we ended up with two swell directions combining and a three knot current from varying directions creating a messy ocean, particularly when the larger three metre swells met each other's paths. Jim kept close to Yakaba Head and we were hoping that the sea would flatten out a little once we were a few miles from land. Jim's just put the main up. The sea state's been really unpleasant. A bit like a washing machine. I felt seasick, had to have a sofrum. Heavy as a feather, pure as the driven snow. But watch your back, it's hard to break weather. I think it's time to go. My mind's made up. My mind's made up. We keep doing this, but nothing's getting better. So I'll stand up and walk out. Make my way along for now. Finally sailing, which is much more pleasant. <sighs> yeah. When we set out from Sydney in 2019, I tried to explain the call of the sea. 
that for those who hear it, it is irresistible. Any sailor will tell you that the moment you leave land, you also leave behind all those things that stress you and make you anxious. Because out here you have to exist solely in the present moment. The world may be in turmoil and yet in this moment I am those birds swooping and diving into the sea. I am that sun rising golden over the waves and it feels as if something otherworldly is touching the earth. Sailors talk of this as a kind of religious experience. It's a feeling of oneness and I guess that's why we live this life and answer the call of the sea again and again despite the dangers and discomforts because of this moment of pure freedom, of endless possibilities. Despite feeling queasy, I can hear that call and I'm grateful to be out here, answering it, finally. Tasman Sea is rated as one of the most dangerous and roughest seas in the world. Referred to as the Ditch, it sits between Australia and New Zealand and is 2,000 kilometres or 1,200 miles across and about 2,800 kilometres or 1,700 miles from north to south. The reason it's so rough and unpredictable has to do with the warm currents from the Pacific Ocean meeting the cold currents from the Southern Ocean causing swells and waves that have reached as high as 42.5 metres or 120 feet as recorded when six people lost their lives during that year's Sydney to Hobart yacht race. The wave's picking up 25 tonne of boat and just hurling it. But by late afternoon, at least 16 yachts and more than 150 yachtsmen were in trouble. 
got a wave moving through at something like 70 or 80 kilometres an hour. It, it's, it's scary. There are experienced sailors who circumnavigated the entire world without any problems at all until they got to the Tasman Sea. And knowing this is why so many who've travelled the milk run from the Americas to the South Pacific sell their boats before reaching New Zealand. It has had its share of shipwrecks. And it's why any sailor, no matter how experienced, should always be wary sailing her. Can you set the autopilot please, honey? us two and a half years ago and here we are back again. We thought we were going to travel where the wind blew and we did. It blew us into Port Stephens and we're grateful. We couldn't have picked a better place to ride out all the difficulties the world was facing. Now we have a new vision of what we want for the future and if you want to follow us all you have to do is like and subscribe to our channel and YouTube will keep us connected. Thank you for watching and for your support. I know it sounds corny, but it's true. We love making videos for you. We get excited when we have something fun to share with you. Because as strange as it sounds, you are our YouTube family. Lucy says don't forget to stay well, stay safe and keep your tail wagging. Ciao Amici! Hi everyone, Lucy and I have a confession to make about living on land after six years on a boat. Don't we, Luce? It's very strange. We don't like it, do we? No. No. We want to go home. Yeah. It's only been six weeks. Anyway, thanks for listening. We feel better now. Bye.